And as I've already said, indexing is a very important piece of managing your SQL Server environment. Now, as far as an agenda goes today, uh, we just wrapped up an introduction. So we've, we've had a bit of an introduction. We're going to talk about the clustered index and why it's not the only thing that we need. You know, we stress talking about putting in clustered indexes, but that's not all. That's not the end point. That's just the beginning. We're going to talk about the value of clustered, non-clustered indexes, where it is that it gets you, and then we're going to talk about the non-clustered index patterns. And these patterns are ways in which you can look at a problem and start digging in and leveraging the different types of non-clustered indexes. You don't just want to make a non-clustered index on every single column you do want to take some time to figure out some variations of those indexes so you get the right indexes in place. And I'll show you some basic examples of those. And then we'll final, finalize up with a summary of what we've talked about. Now, we've done the introduction, so let's get into the clustered indexes. Now, clustered indexes, this is the default storage. Um, if you're adding just the base index on it, this is where you want to start with. You can sort it by one or more columns, uh, the data and the and the index are stored together, and so you've got leaf levels and non-leaf levels for this for your index, and it's all kind of brought in together. You can have fragmenta fragmentation issues on this, and you're going to do operations such as an index scan or an index seek on it, or maybe a key lookup. And unless you have a reason and you have proof that you shouldn't put a clustered index on a table, you should always start with a clustered index on the table. But that doesn't fix every problem. And as, as I've already talked about, it does introduce not other problems, but it introduces only one path for getting to the data in the most effective way. And so let's talk about what that, that problem is. And so suppose that you're going into the sales order header table. And that's what I've got a sample of on the screen here. With a clustered index on this table, we've got it clustered on sales order ID and sales order detail ID. This is leveraging a, a two-column clustered index, but it's keeping all the sales orders together. And this makes it really simple if you want to go out and pull out all the orders by 43,659. You can get to all those very easily. Just query on it and you pull it up and it knows, SQL Server knows exactly where those rows are. If you want to get to 43,660, you can do that as well, or 43,661. You can get to any one of these sales order IDs very simply because SQL Server knows exactly where it is. And that's one of the great uses for clustered indexes. Unfortunately, what about product ID? If you want to go out and pull out everything for product ID 776, SQL Server doesn't know where those rows are, and so in order for SQL Server to find it, it has to scan the entire table. Now it's going to look through the product ID column, but it has to scan every single row. Not a big problem if there are 10 rows. Kind of a big problem if there's 10 terabytes of data. You know, as your data gets bigger and bigger, you're going to see problems. I've worked with clients where just not having a column like product ID index led to outages, led to their database being shut down, led to people having to work on Christmas and over the holidays. You don't want to be on call all the time just because you're lacking a few indexes. So you want to make sure you get these things into your databases. Now, you know, say you go and look for 716, same thing. If you go look for 762, same thing. That's the that big problem with clustered indexes is that it only works for that first leading column. And so let me show you that just so you can demonstrate it. So when you go back at go back afterwards, you can see that this is actually a true case. So let's jump into Management Studio, and I'm going to show you here with the uh, sales order detail, and there is actually, by default, within AdventureWorks, an index on product ID, so we're going to make sure that we pull that out, and we'll start some, some statistics, get some statistics going here. So let's first go with the, just looking for sales order 43,659. Four, 4, Make sure we turn on the actual plans. And like we already mentioned, you look for a single item in there, and it's going to bring back all the items that match. Because SQL Server knows 
the volume in which this one this one type of uh, uh, this one value repeats within the ta within the table it can give you a plan where instead of a scan it can seek through the table now one thing to to pay attention to here is that there's only three reads on the table. And that's kind of really important. It's important to know because this table is not just three pages. This table is, in fact, if we look at the entire table, one thousand two hundred and forty six pages. And you don't want to be looking at every single page for every single query. Now in the two queries that I just wrote, or actually the second query that I wrote, there really isn't any option. There's no filtering on it, so there's no way that you can reduce the number of pages. But you don't want to ha you have this style query where you're pulling back everything basically match the I.O. operations of a query where you're pulling out a specific product ID. And if we run this, because there is no index on product ID, 